downtown and I'm headed to Lawrence House. It's something old that's been made new again because now it's being managed by the flat. You grew up around here and now you are one of the proprietors behind Larry's and Heritage. Yeah, that's right. Okay, now Heritage does coffee and bicycles. We do, we manufacture bicycles in Chicago. Is that just because you love bicycles and coffee? Yeah, I mean, it was one of those things that just paired together and makes sense. We've been able to branch off uh, from the original location in Lakeview to Uptown. And I think, you know, the neighborhood here has just been so supportive of what we're doing as a coffee shop for the neighborhood. So, bicycles, coffee, yeah. and then you want to add to that booze. Yeah. So, why Larry's? You gotta diversify, right? <laughs> um, we want to create this really accessible neighborhood spot uh, for cocktails. I'm Ian Vokes, chef owner of Three Squares Diner. Uh, the diner is inside the Lawrence House, which has also got a lot of Art Deco elements, and we use that here. Uh, we have a minimalist vibe, uh, and we are an all-day diner from 7 a.m. to 9 p.m., uh, and we are a modern take on the classic diner. Uh, one of our most popular dishes is the hot chicken and waffle. Uh, another is the omelet, which is sort of like a take on trees own eggs. We make everything in-house. We have a smoked, tr uh, smoked trout pastrami, uh, so we treat the trout just like we would pastrami, where we cure it and smoke it in-house. Uh, and then we serve it cold with a lot of greens, some gluten-free caraway crackers, and a horseradish beet cream. We have a killer burger that everybody comes in at night and gets as well. My name is Tege Strada, and uh... I'm the owner of the Mara Ethiopian restaurant. We're celebrating our 11th year. We start cooking the basis with onion, garlic, ginger. You cook that for a while, and then you add spice, and then veggie or meat. So it's cooked for a long time, so the, like the flavors are concentrated. It's like you share a plate, so when you're sharing, you're like engaging with each other. And we don't even use a tensor, we use our hand. You take a piece of bread, you scoop the food with it, and the bread is fermented. It has a little bit sourness, but you can taste the food. When you pair it with something that's very, has spices, it's really good. The Ethiopian culture is just like, when someone walks into your door, you're excited. Like, come on in, sit down, have the food. Are you hungry? Are you thirsty? What would you like? Coffee, tea. We see a lot of African influence, a lot of African restaurants, Ethiopian, Nigerian um, restaurants here in Uptown. So it's a great place to really eat around the world in just a few blocks. Well, besides Demira, what are some of your other favorite African There spots? are so many, it's hard to pick favorites. But we also have Tesfa Ethiopian down on Wilson, Ceylon Market. Uptown has really been a port of entry, not only for um, immigrants from other countries, but also from folks um, throughout the U.S. So it was an Appal a place where a lot of Appalachian folks moved. A lot of Native Americans came here. There was a Native American Cultural Center in Uptown. And then after that, a lot of Southeast Asian immigrants, a lot of African immigrants, and folks from all over the world. Uptown became a big entertainment district. So we had started off um, in the teens, actually, with SNA Studios over on Argyle, which was a big silent film studio where folks like Charlie Chaplin filmed movies. Wow. So it was the Hollywood before it was Hollywood. And after that, a bunch of these big theaters and movie palaces opened. So we had the Riviera, we had the Aragon, and then of course, the biggest one of them all, the Uptown Theater, which when it was built, it was the largest theater in the world. The uh, folks who own the Uptown Theater mm -hmm. are, are working to renovate and reopen the theater. They hope to open in 2020. It's an incredible piece of architecture. It's gonna be an incredible venue. It's gonna be one of, if not the biggest um, theater venue in the city, bigger than the Chicago Theater and the Auditorium theater downtown so a lot of folks are going to start coming up to uptown to see more shows I'm here with Kelly she's one of the owners of Sunwa which is a James Beard award-winning cult following famous place for duck yes we are roasted duck uh, our most popular item is actually the Beijing duck dinner service and that's the one where we take our roast duck basically and take it to your table, carve a table side, you get all the meat and the skin off, you wrap it in those soft little fluffy buns, and we send the carcass back to the kitchen. You get your soup from the bones and fried rice from the meat. Nothing of the duck is wasted. No, we don't waste. Uh, we have a very Jewish grandma type mentality in the family. Uh, don't waste anything. Everything's got to go back. Talk about Uptown. Like, what was it like growing up? Yeah. It, was, it was scary when we I were I hear like, that. Yeah. But now, it's beautiful. It is 
much better. This is probably the most diverse area I've ever seen. Let's talk about the nightlife. Um, Uptown Lounge is probably one of the places to go after you go to the concerts. Mm -hmm. If you like to people watch late at night, that's your place okay. to go. And what about, um, I go to Fat Cat a lot. A fat Cat I like too. You have the Green Mill, which is dated back to 1907. Uh, it has uh, a lot of historical value because that was supposedly a big hangout for Al Capone. I know it's cold right now, but there's also a couple of beaches, right, that are... Absolutely, yes. Uptown's got access to Montrose Beach. Yes in the summer. Foster Beach is great. What kind of housing options are there? Um, it's still very affordable here. Um, there's a lot of, like I said, new construction going on and rehabs of existing homes. So you have a lot of condo buildings um, and apartments here. There's a, a higher percentage, probably one bedroom, apartments and condos in this area than most of the city. But if you are wanting to raise a family here, you can find uh, single family homes. You can find two, three bedroom condominiums. entertainment district for the entire city. This is where everybody came. My grandmother would talk about coming to Uptown to go dancing. And the Green Mill was the cornerstone of that. It was um, the Green Mill and Green Mill Gardens was this entire block. It is a jazz club seven nights a week. There's always live jazz, Friday nights until 4 a.m., Saturday nights until 5 a.m. This was like always where Al Capone sat because you could see both doors. Ooh. And his favorite song was Rhapsody in Blue. Whenever he'd come in, the band would go into Rhapsody in Blue. He'd sit in this table, have a couple of drinks. And this stuff is all from the 20s. Like the physical bar was put in 1938. Who are the people that are coming? Who are the folks that are coming to the it's Green It's all Bar? over the place. There's kids, there's tourists. There's a lot of people coming here on their 21st birthday because they've heard about the place. And then there's people from all over the world who have heard about the jazz or the gangster connection. Our normal crowd is just not a normal crowd. It's all <laughs> over the place. Well, I'm here. I might as well. I'll see you next time on The Grid. To find all of these places we highlighted in today's video, head to the Chicago Sun-Times website. See you next time on The Grid.